हेलो एंड वेलकम टू दी वीडियो लेक्चर ऑन प्रोग्रामिंग एक्सटर्नल हार्डवेयर इंटरप्ट आई एन टी जीरो एंड आई एन टी वन इन एट जीरो फाइव एंड माइक्रो कंट्रोलर सो लेट एस फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज एक्सटर्नल इंटरप्ट आई एन टी जीरो एंड आई एन टी वन सो एट जीरो फाइव वन हैज अ टू एक्सटर्नल हार्डवेयर इंटरप्ट दैट इज आई एन नेम्ड एज आई एन टी जीरो एंड द आई एन टी वन नाउ पिन नंबर ट्वेल्व एंड पिन नंबर थर्टीन दैट इज पोर्ट पिन थ्री पॉइंट टू एंड पोर्ट पिन थ्री पॉइंट थ्री दे आर बेसिकली डिजाइन फॉर जनरेटिंग दीज इंटरप्ट बिकॉज दीज आर एक्सटर्नल हार्डवेयर इंटरप्ट सो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉगल दीज एक्सटर्नल पिन्स टू जनरेट एन एक्सटर्नल इंटरप्ट सो अपॉन एक्टिवेशन ऑफ दीज पिन्स द एट जीरो फाइव वन गेट इंटरप्टेड एंड जम्स टू दी वेक्टर टेबल टू परफॉर्म दी इंटरप्ट सर्विस रूटीन Now let us first understand uh, what is INT zero or external interrupt zero. So this is connected internally via port pin three point two. So whenever you want to uh, give an external interrupt zero, that means you have to deal with the port pin three point two. That means you are going to toggle port pin three point two. So then processor respond to this interrupt uh, after toggling the pin. Uh, this is useful in eight zero five one, but as we are using one pin of port three for generating an interrupt, now we cannot use the complete port three for the data transfer. Uh, it is a user's responsibility to define the interrupt service routine for this interrupt. We are going to write the interrupt service routine, and the address for writing the service routine is zero 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 three h. and it has the seven address locations uh, for writing the isr so this is what is uh, the information about the int0 signal now let us see about the int1 so this is a int1 also termed as an ex1 external interrupt now it is connected internally via port pin 3.3 that means here we are going to toggle the port point uh, pin 3.3 to generate an external interrupt 1 Again, the same thing. It is useful for AT fifty one, but again, it prevent the entire port three for complete data transfer. Uh, for this interrupt also, we have to define the ISR interrupt service routine, and the ISR starting address for this is zero zero one three H, and it also has a seven address location for user to define the interrupt service routine. So this is what is the information about INT zero and INT one. now we'll uh, go for the uh, program and its skill demonstration uh, step by step to understand the interrupt in more detail so this is one program i have written for the external interrupt so initial instruction is org 000x so it is the assembler directive after that i have written the instruction ljump main and this instruction is for bypassing the interrupt vector table because the interrupt vector table addresses this stands from 0003h so if we don't write this instruction then our main program will uh, go into the interrupt vector table addresses and which is uh, not at all valid and therefore in case of writing this interrupt we need to uh, bypass this interrupt vector table and normally we should start writing our main program Uh, when the last address of this interrupt vector table will be over so according to that table which i have already discussed in my previous videos again i will provide the link of that video in the description box so the last address uh, is 2323 so after leaving the seven locations from 23 you can write your main program okay so that's why we have written the instruction l jump main then i have written the isr for the int0 here we are dealing with the demonstration of both the external interrupt int0 and int1 and we know that the isr address for int0 is 0003 and i have written the instruction move p0 comma hash 00 so i am putting 00 on p0 in this isr and return i return i is for coming out of that particular sub routine Similarly, I have written the ISR for INT one, but the address of INT one ISR is zero zero one three. So I have written the instruction ORG zero zero one three. Then uh, here I am uh, moving value zero two into the P two, and then again the return I instruction to come out of this routine. And now my main program is there. 
so first i have loaded my ie with a value of 85 uh, enable int 0 and i for enabling these two interrupts uh, so ie register details also uh, we have discussed in my previous video so uh, for more information you can refer my video and then uh, after loading this this is basically for enabling the two interrupts int 0 and int 1 and then after that uh, simply there will be one loop as jump here that means your microcontroller is busy in this loop only and whenever any one of the interrupt occurs either int 0 or int 1 then the control will be um, transferred to that particular ISR so this is what is a simple program now we'll uh, go for the step by step debugging of this so let's go to the debug session so see here I have uh, already uh, taken this parallel port p0 port p0 port p2 port p3 uh, and the interrupt system so uh, all these things we have already taken so here in the interrupt system you can see the vector table so the highest priority is port pin 3.2 that is int0 and the vector addresses are also mentioned and you can see here the last address is 0023 so you can start your main program after this leaving some 7 8 locations you can start okay then you have a interrupt request interrupt enable and interrupt priority here we have not set any priority so it is not showing you any priority levels so let us start executing this program uh, so the first step is uh, i'll jump to main so the control will go to this main here i is equal to 85 that we have loaded so when the instruction will get executed then you see the, in the interrupt system so see here your uh, interrupt 0 is enabled and as well as the interrupt 1 is also enabled so for enabling both of these interrupt you have to load 85 and now your controller is busy in this loop only it is not going to do anything now what i will do i will generate an interrupt from the uh, external pins so port 3 is used for generating the external hardware interrupt here first I will generate the interrupt uh, 0 that is int 0 and for generating int 0 the port pin 3.2 is used. So I will toggle this port pin 3.2 so this is 3.0, 3.1 and 3.2. So now the interrupt is generated and in response to this interrupt now the microcontroller will uh, transfer its control to the ISR. So see here the address of ISR is 0003. So control is moved to this instruction and this 00, 0 will be moved to P0. So you see here ISR gets executed and still I have not removed this interrupt. This is a level a triggered interrupt because initially it is high and then I have applied a low level. Then it will come out of the routine but still if you give a low level then again it will go to the interrupt and it will continue. So if you want to come out of this routine then you have to again make it 1. Okay. So this is what is uh, the int 0. Now let's see how the int 1 works. So for int 1 the port pin 3.3 you have to toggle. So 3.0, 3.1, 3.2 and 3.3. Now I will give this interrupt. And now see here. From main the control will be transferred to the ISR. But in this case the address will be 0013. And now the value 02 will be moved to port P2. So see ISR gets executed and return I will uh, move the control back to the main program but unless and until you remove this interrupt again and again the controller will get interrupted and the control will be transferred to the ISR so I will take out this particular thing so this is how basically both these external hardware interrupts will work now uh, let us also see about the priorities of the interrupt now if you consider that if I give or activate both of these interrupts at the same time so let's see what happens so this is 3.0 3.1 this is 3.2 3.3 now i have given enabled both the interrupts at the same time both the interrupts are given and now uh, let us see where the control will go so by default or according to the priority you can see in the interrupt table the int 0 will be having a high priority and therefore now the control will be uh, moved or transferred to the ISR of INT0. So see here 
the control will go to the isr and again that isr particular isr will get executed and then it will come out so unless and until you change this priority every time the priority will be given to the uh, in int 0 because it is by default priority but suppose we want to alter this priority then see what we can do so for altering the priority we are going to use a ip register so that is also discussed in my previous video so i will also add this and let us check the output so i will add one instruction let's so i have loaded the value 0 4 in ip so by loading this value 0 4 in ip actually i am altering the priority of the interrupt so now in this case now int 1 will get the high priority int 1 will get high priority Now let us see how this gets executed. So save this and once again build and go to the debug session. So now see once again I will execute it uh, step by step. So F10. So again control will come over here. Now both are enabled and if you can see here after executing the instruction move IP comma 04. You can see here in the interrupt system priority is now set to 1 for the interrupt 1 that means now the high priority is assigned to that interrupt so now the controller will be in the loop and now if again i give both the interrupt simultaneously then now the control will be transferred to this isr of int 1 so see here now this isr will get executed and 0 2 will be transferred to the port p2 and then it will again come out of the loop so unless and until you remove this every time the priority will be given to the int1 so this is so once you remove if you remove this int1 then now it will go to the isr of the first one that is int0 so this is what all about the uh, two external hardware interrupts and how to set the priority and ultra the priority for both of these interrupts so if you like my video then please subscribe to my channel and also share video with your friends thank you guys thank you so much